All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the three phase rectifier. So previously, we've already looked at the single phase, two versions of the single phase, really. We've looked at the full wave and the half wave. And so this three phase rectifier will be, I guess, uh, it's not as theoretically involved because there's, I mean, there's, there isn't much to discuss, um, I guess, relatively speaking, when you compare it to the full wave, or sorry, the, the full bridge and the half wave rectifiers. Um, but still, it's it's still something that's worth looking into. So the actual topology of the circuit is important to discuss, so let's look at that first. Essentially, it's the connection of three half bridges, as most three-phase, uh, or most of the, I guess, the, the most common three-phase topologies are. They're essentially just three phases of half bridges connected, the three-phase inverter being another one like that. Um, this is the DC side here. And we're going to have here, we're going to have three phase AC input like this. And for some reason, we've completely disregarded the grid lines, but that's okay. This is VA, this is VB, and this is VC. Now these two, or sorry, these three voltages are equal in amplitude and frequency, but are phase displaced by 120 degrees, as three phase systems usually are. So if you think about them in terms of phasers, they look something like this right? Three phase displaced. And so the waveforms, which are obviously the most important thing, look something like this because you have certain restrictions and I forgot to label VD. So here is VD. That's the output voltage or the DC side voltage, however you want to consider it. And so you see here that VA, B, and C are three phase displaced from one another. And you see that they have an amplitude of Vs, and they all have the same frequency. Okay, so that should be pi there, and that's 2 pi. So maybe we can include that just for the sake of clarity. This is pi, and this is 2 pi. And the reason I know that is because that's where Va goes to 0, and that's where it goes to 0 again. Okay, now, on this side here, we have, we're sort of zero, zeroing in on a single phase. And that's what they've done here. They've labeled pi here, and they've labeled 2 pi here. And you see that the diodes don't conduct until pi over 6, and, f and or they only conduct between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, because it just so happens that the way that the diode voltages um, are kind of related to one another, it doesn't become greater than 0 until this is uh, equal to pi over 6. So ID, um, or IA, I guess, here, giving a positive value of ID here, and ID being this current here. So I guess we can also model this as a voltage source, but now we're running out of space, aren't we? So maybe we move this thing down so we can actually talk about stuff. We can get rid of these labels because we, we know what those are now. We're not, we're not that new anymore, so we know what's going on there. So this can be a current source, let's say. Okay, so that's a current source. It doesn't matter what the load is. It just matters that that's ID. So that means IA is going to go between 0 and ID, and then it goes between 0 and minus ID because that's for the negative half cycle, right? And again, this is true for the uh, full bridge rectifiers as well, right? So you have this kind of behavior. But the more interesting thing is this, right? So you see that there's like these, like these ripples are very small inherently. And what's happening here is this, so one of these would be like, let's say this VA, and then the negative portion of this phase ends up being flipped, right? So anything that's negative here ends up being flipped. So what does that look like when you actually flip them? So if this phase here was to be flipped like this, you would have that there. And if this one is flipped, then you have that like this. And this one here, you have that like this. Something like this, right? I mean, my, my, my waveforms are not as, they're not drawn as accurately as the, as, as the, uh, the computer generated ones are. But overall, you expect some voltage that's so doing this basically, right? So that's where this waveform comes from. So that's the rectified version of all of these. And it just so happens that this is root three Vs, okay? And so Vs is the amplitude of that, so this is root three times Vs, and that's what Vd is equal to. And so sometimes this is called a six pulse rectifier. And the reason for that is because there are six pulses per period, because you have, um, you have three phases, but then you end up having the negative cycle is flipped, so that's three plus three ends up giving you six pulses. Now there are multiple different versions. There is also, you can also connect two six pulse rectifiers together and they can be, form a, 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 a 12 pulse rectifier. There's, 
18 pulse. You can have you can have multiple different versions, more phases, more uh, series connections, and so on. But overall, the behavior is the same here. And so, as far as all this is concerned, is I mean, it's really just a matter of figuring out what it is that you want, how how it is that you want this thing to conduct. Um, but essentially, I mean, as far as the conduction states are concerned. You can figure them out by zeroing in on one of the phases here. So if we do that here, for instance, when VA is above zero, right, we also have to consider the fact that VB is less than zero, right? So if VA is greater than zero, we would expect this diode to be on. VB is less than zero, so that means this diode is going to be on. And then VC, what's happening to VC at that time? VC is also less than zero. So we expect this diode to be on, right? So we have on, 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 and then these three would be off, say, at this instant, right? So the thing is that because there's so many components here, I mean, analyzing the entire thing, there isn't much, I don't know if, maybe it's not right to say that there's, there isn't much value in it because at the end of the day, what you're concerned with is this output. You can go through the conduction states, but at the end of the day, all you're going to find is you end up with a waveform that looks something like this, and that the out, that the output, uh, the peak of that is root three v s, and basically, I mean, because this ripple is going to be so small, you're going to end up with a value, an average value that's going to be roughly around that value as well. It'd be slightly less than because that's the peak value. You can calculate this because you can add the three phases together, um, the three phase waveforms. I mean, so you can say v d average would equal 1 over 2 pi, and then you would have Vs sine omega t, well, this would be the integral, right? So you'd have to, you'd have to integrate uh, 0 to 2 pi Vs sine omega t uh, dt, sorry, d omega t plus Vs sine omega t minus 120 uh, dt plus Vs sine omega t minus 240 dt, and then you can do all of that, and you'll get the average. Um, overall, you get a value that would be very close to this root 3 vs, just based on the way that you can see what this waveform already looks like, right? And so, again, this is a very practical, very useful uh, topology. It's used extensively in industry, various different applications from um, wind integration to uh, motor drives and all that kind of stuff. So there is value in understanding how this works, but the overall operating principles for this converter are the same as the full bridge and the half wave. Uh, so if you haven't seen those, I'll link those in the, in the description below. So you can take a look at how those operate and you can reason with yourself and figure out how this one operates as well. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.